Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the Earth and try to calculate the equilibrium temperature of the Earth with the amount of energy it receives from the Sun. Now the Earth is at a distance of about 150 million kilometers on average and the amount of heat or intensity of sunlight that it receives is about 1361 watts per square meter. It varies somewhere between 1300 and 1400 roughly because the Earth of course is not going around the sun in a, in a circular orbit, it has an elliptical orbit, and sometimes a little bit closer, sometimes a little bit farther away. But on average, it's about 1,367 watts. Now, I put some reference temperature down here that minus 18 degrees centigrade is 255 Kelvin, and I've placed that for a reason. Now, let's try to calculate the theoretical equilibrium temperature, first assuming all the energy of the sun is received from the Earth, and then secondly, realizing that part of it is being reflected before it can be absorbed, let's see what it would be if about half of the energy gets received and absorbed by the, by the Earth. So we need the equation that the input of the power of the, of the energy of the sun is equal to the amount of energy being radiated out from the Earth using the Stefan Boltzmann's equation. So in this case, that would be the intensity times the effective area, which would be the cross-sectional area of the Earth, that is equal to E sigma, the area, the surface area of the Earth, times the equilibrium temperature to the fourth power. So this would be the intensity times pi r squared, that would be the cross-sectional area of the Earth, and that would be equal to E sigma times 4 pi r squared times the equilibrium temperature to the fourth power. And again, as before, the pi's cancel out and the r squared cancels out. So solving that for the equilibrium temperature, we have the equilibrium temperature is equal to the fourth root of the intensity divided by E sigma times 4. The 4 comes from this factor right here. And if we plug in the numbers associated with that, assuming that we receive all of the 1,367 watts per square meter and absorb that on the surface of the Earth, the equilibrium temperature would be equal to the square root of, uh, let's see, the fourth root of the intensity, 1,367 divided by 1, divided by 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, and divided by 4. So let's see what that would be equal to. So this would be the theoretical temperature or equilibrium temperature of the Earth, assuming, and that's of course the average temperature, assuming that we receive all of the energy from the sun, none of it gets reflected. All right, so we have 1367 divided by 5.67 e to the 8 minus, divided by 4, take the square root, take the square root again, and we have a temperature of about 278.6 so it will be 278.6 Kelvin. Notice that's actually warmer than 0 degrees centigrade. That's about 5 degrees above the 0 degree centigrade mark. So the average temperature would be about 5 degrees centigrade. Now in actuality, the average temperature of the Earth is closer to about, oh, let's see, I would say 15, 15 degrees centigrade, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's actually a lot warmer than that, and that's, that's of course the Earth's atmosphere retains some of that heat. It can escape back into space, which means the Earth is actually warmer than that, and that's the reason. Now, it turns out that not all of the energy is being absorbed. Some of it is being reflected from the cloud tops, from the polar caps, from wherever there is snow on the ground in the wintertime, and so less of that energy gets through. So let's say that it's only half of it that makes it through, what would be the situation? All right, in that case, the temperature equilibrium, so that would be at 50% of the 1,367 watts per square meter. So let's recalculate that now if it was only half that energy getting through. So that would be equal to the fourth root of, that would be 1,367 divided by two, Divide this by 1, divide this by sigma, and divide this by 4. Sigma, of course, is the 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. So let's see what we get there. So we take 1367, we divide that by 2, we divide by 5.67 e to the 8 minus, divide by 4, take the square root twice, and now we have a temperature of 234 Kelvin. 234 Kelvin, so that would be approximately equal to minus 39 degrees centigrade. 
So that's frigidly cold. So if only half that energy were to get through, that would be the equilibrium temperature of the Earth, which of course, if that was the case, everything would freeze. This is still fairly cold. We know that the amount of energy that we receive from the sun, part of it is being reflected, so maybe 30%, 40%, something like that. But it turns out that we have calculated what the equilibrium temperature would be, and we know that it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of minus 18 to minus 20 degrees centigrade, somewhere in this neighborhood. And so you can see that's the result that we get when we pick a number between 100% of the energy received and 50% of the energy received. So we know that in actuality, the equilibrium temperature of the Earth would be somewhere in between uh, 234 Kelvin and 278 Kelvin. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 255 or 253 Kelvin or something like that. And of course, the question is, why isn't it that cold? And the reason is the Earth's atmosphere is like a blanket around the Earth. It retains some of the heat which is a really good thing. If it wasn't, the entire Earth would be like a big snowball. But luckily enough, we do have an atmosphere that keeps in the heat and keeps us comfortably warm. And so the equilibrium temperature is a lot closer to about 273 uh, plus 15. That would put it at about uh, 288 Kelvin. And so that you know that that gives us a nice climate to live in versus the frigidly cold temperatures we would see if it wasn't for the fact that the Earth keeps in quite a bit of heat that we receive from the sun. And that's how we know.